see, what was I saying? Oh yes, <laughs> welcome everyone. And I'm gonna give you an update on the planet today. Um, the human collective, the split, um, what people, a lot of people out there are calling the event um, and other such things. It's gonna be super fascinating. Um, um, you probably noticed that things are heating up somewhat on the planet. Uh, I don't know if you're personally getting affected by it or not, but um, one of the main questions that I'm asked all the time uh, through the uh, social media, uh, no, social networks, and also via email and personally too, is um, so when it when is this bit happening, right? Uh, when exactly is the, is the date of the split happening? And um, I don't see any evidence of it. Um, so here's a, the answer to, to those two questions first. I've been mentioning many, many times for years now, and I used to say the fifth dimension is not a location, it's not a time space, it's a creation, right? And I've been mentioning many, many times that basically the split doesn't, it's not an internal event, right? And um, it's not a external event. It's something that you embody, okay? So we've been in conversations with the individuals who came to the last retreat about, um, really making a contract of embodying the highest frequency of Gaia right now, right? And there was a lot of resistances. Uh, there's the resistances of, well, I've done contracts in the past and they were, they backfired and they're not very good, contracts suck, you know, all these type of things. <laughs> um, and also, uh, what if I can't keep my end of the contract? You know, what if I say, okay, I'm gonna sign this contract and I'm going to embody the highest frequency that Gaia is at the moment for us, um, but I fail, you know. I get sucked into low frequency engagements and I go into anger, fear, and all these other things. What do, what do I do, you know? So I don't want to sign anything because I might break the contract. And, um, so I know other people say, well, what does it mean to embody it? You know, what does it mean? I thought it was going to happen out there. I thought the government was going to change. And I thought that the chemtrails were going to stop. And I thought that, you know, the vaccination stuff was going to end. And I thought that people weren't going to be censored on, on the internet and all these type of things, right? So well, let's have a look at all those points. With regards to the contract, I'm thinking, well, um, why wouldn't you sign that contract? You know, somebody else mentioned, I'll do it for a year. So what happens after a year? You know, give you permission to go back to low frequency engagements? Um, or what is it? You know, what is it that you feel you can't sign this contract with Gaia, right? Um, what, what is the problem with that? And it's a lot of the time it's habit and the fact that we are so used to indulging in low frequency stuff, that we don't even know what the world looks like without it. So with regards to, um, you know, having a problem in a firewall regarding just generally contracts, I would say use the firewalls exercise. A contract, um, you can absolutely break the contract at any time. And like Larry said the other day, if you, saw, if you see a more handsome Gaia or a more pretty Gaia somewhere, else you know in a different planet then oh yeah you can leave your wife here you know because it's like a marriage contract with Gaia you can leave her here and go off with the other one you know <laughs> so I thought that was really hilarious and that's why I'm sharing it with you um, because it really kind of illustrates what we're saying no to right um, or why we would want to break this contract uh, now, with regards to the problem of how will I make sure I don't breach contract, right? Go and going to low frequency stuff. So um, we are we were born in the old paradigm, and we still carry a lot of old paradigm programs and a lot of reactions. So the low low frequency 
is a reaction. So when somebody attacks you or you get angry for something, you go into attack and you defend yourself with words, you know, oh, it wasn't me, I never do that, and blah, 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 blah. Um, or um, are you going to victim? How can you be so cruel to me? Oh, you're nasty, you're a horrible person, you know? Um, and what is the high frequency response to that? You go, whoa, I got angry. Hmm, I wonder what it latched onto inside of me that, triggered what is this trigger from and you become interested about it and suddenly this trigger and this anger becomes interesting and at the same time the way you respond is something like could be like um you know what i'm kind of triggered right now I'm super angry so I, I i i choose not to engage right now and maybe we can talk about this later and just walk away right or if it's a situation where it's a public thing right, somebody randomly attacks you, then you simply do not respond to them at their frequency. You just turn around and walk away, right? That even though you'll be hurt or upset or angry or whatever, you're not reacting. You're not suppressing it either. You're, you can use the, the fear processing exercise on everything, you know, like anger, anger, you're welcome here. And that allows you to feel it without, you know, exploding it out onto others or onto this planet. So, yeah, you got angry, but your reaction didn't come along, your response did. And that's why you wouldn't be on breach of contract. And it's practice make per makes perfect. That's one of those situations, right? We don't get it right the first month or maybe in the first six months or even the first year. But eventually, with a lot of practice, we get it right. We get it right, and you, you, and by getting it right and becoming responsive, then your frequency starts getting higher and higher. And the and the times when you get triggered or invited into low frequency engagements, and you have a kryptonite running or whatever, become less and less and less. So um, that would be one of those things, and. With regards to the split, that's what it means. It means you become the high frequency of this planet. You are that and you, you do it consciously. And whenever it triggers and programs and all these things come along to try and pull you down in frequency, you respond to them, right? Following your training, you have all the tools we have all the tools, you, you know, in the website and in aliabenz.com, you have lots of tools at our library. We have a Walk With Me Now library for my, I'm explaining for the YouTube. <laughs> uh, the Walk With Me library, this is the platform, empowerment platform that I have on the internet. We have a ton of courses and classes and tools. So if you're on the internet, just go to my website, download the, the free stuff there, tons of it, tons of information, tons of tools that you can use, tons of meditations that you can use. The tools are there. You don't like my tools? Fine. Find somebody's tools that you like. Make your own tools. But whatever you do, use them and do this thing. Embody the new paradigm. <clears throat> That's the only way as a collective that we can start manifesting this this new paradigm as an environment, as an environment, is that it's enough of us, right? Is that a black helicopter? <laughs> Can you hear it? <laughs> so this is how it is, right? And um, this is what we do. It's like, we are the new paradigm. It's, you know, it's not something that we are the split. We are the ones that saying, not good enough. I don't think that that is good enough for me anymore. And I don't think that's good enough for my species or my planet, right? The uh, engagement of low frequency stuff. And then there's the service to others or service to self. That's all splitting you, right? So one of the things is don't do that. Don't do service for others. Don't do service for self. Do service for us. Yeah. See yourself as an us, we are. If you think, you know, I don't know if I like the city I'm living in or I don't belong here, belong here. This is your city, This you are the city. 
And then we start bringing back our ownership of our cities and our the people that we live with in our neighborhoods, the people that are part of our demographics and races and countries and eventually our planet, right? What am I doing to support my planet right now? But we can start something more real. What am I doing to support my city right now? What am I doing to support my neighborhood right now? Because it's mine and if, and it's not about going out there and sacrificing yourself or, martyr, or going into martyrdom, right? It's you. I am my neighborhood. If you say that, how does that feel? And if, you go, if you're cringing right now, then I think maybe you should move. <laughs> and if you're going, whoa, yeah, but you know, I'm Chilean and I live in Boston. So I don't know, this is not really my people. This is not my neighborhood. My neighborhood is in Valparaiso, Chile. No, 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 that's not how it works. Where you're living, that's your neighborhood. That's who you support and who you're supported by, okay? So these are all things that we can do to start being that new paradigm. Being that split, we split us, we split. We make that choice of complete higher frequency now. I hope I'm getting, <laughs> like I'm explaining it in a way that's understandable, I really do. Um, so I mentioned a few other points and I didn't write them down. Ilya, do you remember what they were that I was gonna cover? <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one of the yeah. things. Um, yeah, you, you remember something? No, I was about to mention that if somebody remembers them, they can type them in the chat and I can read them so they don't show up on YouTube if they don't want to. Oh, good. Yeah. Yes, very good idea. So um, I also mentioned the all you know things that are very in your face right now, like the people that are anti-vaccinations are being attacked, even physically attacked, um, uh, like aggressively attacked. Uh, Mailchimp, for example, banned an account some accounts because they were sending newsletters out about anti-vaccination things, information. Um, I think Fire, whatever whatever is that's called, I can't remember, the browser, Firefox. Mozilla Firefox. Yeah, also mentioned that they were gonna not show any websites that showed the information and stuff like that. And that's pretty intense, right? So censoring and blocking, some YouTube channels have been closed. Um, just because they're showing information, data and medical information about damage that vaccinations can cause. And that no, we shouldn't put past laws where everybody's forced to do it. So that's pretty intense, at least here. And I know some countries that you can't even get a driver's license or get in a bus if you are not vaccinated in public transportation. So um, it's very intense on the planet. Um, one of the things to remember is that it's like an ownership of our human collective's creation. Okay. So in the old paradigm is taking ownership of our cities, our schools and everything else, which in a way, why not? I mean, they're exploitative, right? Nine to five jobs are exploitative. Um, and schools teach people how to become worker bees and slaves. Uh, so somebody who is waking up and thinking, oh, whoa, you know, these vaccinations are hurting our children, lowering our IQ and making sick and perfect uh, customers for their pharmaceutical companies for the rest of their lives, then uh, I'm not going to vaccinate them. And the school system that creates slaves say, well, you can't bring your child here then. So then they have to make some real life decisions about what paradigm they're gonna be subscribing to. The one that creates worker bee slaves or the ones where they teach their own children, right? 
or organize with other parents and um, go a different route. Um, and one of the things that, especially here in the United States, where there's a very big culture for teenage children to, uh, at 18, apply for college and universities, and they usually apply to the furthest universities from home. And they're pretty much, they never come back. I mean, obviously to visit, but they never move back. Rarely a child will move back. And this has been generations now. As uh, somebody who is from a lineage of social engineers that make plans 100, 200, 300, 500 years in advance, um, I can tell you that um, that was specifically designed or the entire educational system is designed to get in comfort. Right? When you move children away from their parents and that unity and their um, extended family, you split them and then they're lonely and alone, right? And then they have to, they're going to survival um, and all sorts of other things. Um, they don't get supported and they don't support their families anymore. Um, and um, it, it's also used widely for um, the brain drain in, for example, Native American reservations. Um, oh, so hold on. What's going on? It's not a very good resolution. Oh. It's signal down to find out since the black helicopter. <laughs> Dear, um, <laughs> our black helicopter has uh, lowered our, <laughs> our Wi Fi. <laughs> back to five now. I just had to touch it. Okay, good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, Larry it. <laughs> He's going to get some crystals to protect it too. Um, so, what I was saying is um, very well-known used uh, for Native American reservations. Uh, some A couple of generations ago, all the Native American kids were forced to go into um, boarding schools and they were beaten up if they used their native language and they were Christianized, mostly Catholic. And then uh, that's how they wanted to dissolve the, the, the tribes but they kept coming back. They kept running away and coming back. And as soon as they were 18, they would run back to their tribe. So it didn't work out. Nowadays, the tribes are getting people come in and saying to the kids, get a good education, go to college and get a great job. Our black helicopter is back. <laughs> and um, anyway, so that's what's been going on. Um, the schools have been here in, in this reservation and others, and I saw it in Chile, actually, when I was a little kid, people coming in and taking and giving grants and um, scholarships to the, the kids that, that were the brainiest. And these scholarships took them to the United States, right? Or to France or to England. And guess what? Those kids are never coming back. They're never coming back. Occasionally you get kids that come back. So what do you hear? It's very clear. All the, all the people who are skilled and do well in school go to, away to college and universities and they, they never come back. They get good jobs and, you know, well-paid jobs and they live in cities out there and they don't come back. So who's left behind, right? The uneducated, the ones that didn't do well in school, the drug addicts, the troublemakers, the ones that and they didn't have any skill training now. Now in this tribe, they're, changed, they're moving things. They gave grants to kids who specifically chose careers that the tribe needed. And that's the first, that's the first. And I've been talking about this for two years now with different people here about the brain drain and the, the technicalities behind it. And um, talking to Larry's children who go to school here and the one that's in Stanford right now, I said, seriously, I've worked with thousands of people, thousands of people personally, and the ones that were unhappy with their careers, it was always because they chose the career for the monetary value. When they choose a career that supported their family or their neighborhood, they, weren't, they didn't have that problem. So that's the other point. This, as you embody the new paradigm, that's where I said become an ass, um, an ass, <laughs> an <U> us. <laughs> um, 
you can indeed start thinking about what supports you and what supports us as in the group right the group where you live where do you live and what can you do there that supports your city your neighborhood your family yeah if you moved away from your family then maybe think hey how can i support my family and be supported by my family the two things are very important because it's you don't want to fall into the service for others thing where you sacrifice your passions and your joys and what you really love to go and help someone else or support them and they don't support you back you don't do that okay don't do that so um, the split, uh, the, we had a date of this big decision happening and the dates were um, July, August, something like that, August, September, I think it was the end of August actually. <laughs> it's very watery right now because I've been saying it like it's been happening, it started many years ago and it's a gradual thing. Um, the push from the, the people who want to encourage you to go into low frequency. And for example, with the vaccination thing, and it's one of the things that I mentioned often, um, there's a couple of responses that you can have. One is, well, you know, I'm not going to subscribe to that and I'm going to have to figure it out. And then maybe I'll organize myself with other people who are trying to figure it out. And um, we'll figure out an alternative life here on this planet, right? And, you know, the people, a lot of people have gone into righteousness. And guess what? Righteousness is also a low frequency engagement. You're feeding the other side. Are you, so if you go, how dare they? And this is violating my human rights. And how dare they, this and this and the other. And we should, you know, I don't know, whatever. Um, then you're, you're falling for it, right? Righteousness is one of those ways in which high frequency beings are highly and very easily brought down in frequency. And it's one of the most violent frequencies, actually one of the lowest frequencies you can go into, righteousness. Um, and um, so um, the way that I see it is, unless you're in threat of being put in jail, right? Or forced, held down and jabbed with the vaccinations you have options right we have options and this goes for all the other things too where we do have options and it's a matter of figuring out within the larger community with the larger society how to have a life here that is completely in that high frequency state, personally. And with regards to all our family and friends and the people we love and their choices, allow them to know, allow them to have their choice. You can't force them, especially not with righteousness. You can't force them to choose a higher frequency existence. If you have a friend or a child or someone who is really anti-anti-vaxxer, for example, and or afraid or scared or really for, uh, drinking the Kool-Aid or the low paradigm, you can't convert them through righteousness. You can't convert them through arguing with them or forcing them to see stuff. That's not gonna work. All you can do is be a good example and if they attack you, says, how, you know, dad, how could you, you know, talk about not, kid, not vaccinating kids, whatever, you know, you're destroying our society, you're putting my kids in danger, blah, 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 your own grandchildren, blah, 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 blah. And what, how do you respond? You don't argue, you don't defend. I understand your frustration, son. You have a right for your own views, and so do I. So that's the type of non-engagement. You know, you don't go in defending or trying to convince them. The other thing that's highly used here to put people into righteousness and division is Trump. 
and people are continuously asking me to give my views on Trump, right? The president of the United States right now. I'm like, I don't have any views. Uh, you know, it's like, it doesn't actually matter who the president is. The, um, the show, what's it called? Uh, there's a name for those shows. Um, reality show. It's a reality show. And it is designed to split people. To make people go into righteousness in a big way. And so it's happening. That's happening. You know, people go into righteousness. So... Yes, you can talk about your viewpoints and state them, but without the righteousness energy. And when people attack you, don't try and defend your viewpoint. Don't try to convince them that they're wrong. Because it's not going to work. That's just bringing up that frustration, that anger, that righteousness energy in you. That's, that's what the aim of it all is to bring you down in frequency, to bring you down in vibration. So what kind of situations can we see going forward, right? There's the personal one, use the tools and step into that high frequency, be that high frequency experience for yourself and for us. And and then the more of us that do that, then definitely we're going to start seeing direct evidence at a social level. But we have to break through. We have to be those people that do it. It's like many years ago, you know, um, I pointed at the camera and says, yeah, you, I'm talking to you, <laughs> the light workers of this planet. Do it now, man. And now it's, you know, it's the time. Now it's when you do it. And it is like July, August. Is there going to be physical stuff happening? I don't know. But I know that we can't wait any longer. We have to do this. We have to do this right now. We have to be that new frequency. We have to embody it. You have to embody that new frequency, that high frequency. 